Hey, this is Emily Gavin Almanza with your appalling fact about the legal system. Let's talk about prison, release, and reincarceration. So a lot of the time when people come home from prison, the system mandates that they be under supervision of some kind. They have to comply with, on average, as many as 20 different conditions every day. This is not easy to do, which means that fully half of people who end up going back to prison within three years, filling America's prisons, go back to prison having not committed any new crime. How is this possible? You say prison is for crimes. No. Technical violations, meaning a person missed a meeting with their PO or stayed out past curfew or didn't pay an old court debt. All of those can get someone sent back to prison, even though they didn't commit any new crime at all. It's a huge problem. The justification that the system gives is some kind of nebulous argument about like, well, if we monitor people really closely, they're less likely to reoffend, meaning commit new crimes. But are they? Does reincarceration have anything to do with reoffending? There's research from a professor at the University of Iowa College of Law named Ryan Sakota, who looked at this really interesting period in Kansas where Kansas got rid of a huge chunk of community supervision. And what he found was that when they got rid of that supervision in the year 2000, reincarceration dropped by 80%. Way fewer people were going back to prison within one year. Did offenses rise because they weren't monitoring people in the same way? No, they actually didn't. But when Kansas brought back this community supervision in the year 2013, reincarceration shot back up. Was there a commensurate benefit to public safety? Not really. No, reoffending didn't drop. So it doesn't appear that these two things are actually connected. Instead, it looks like community supervision is just sending a ton of people back to prison who shouldn't be there at all.